The GLC will not allow us to do Mickey Spillane as our set book. Ah, that's a bit more lively than playing Romeo and Juliet, isn't it? Uh, livelier? Well, let me tell you something. Romeo and Juliet, if you really look at it, is, is, is a bit more sexy than his hot eyes seared through her flimsy dress. Oh, oh, right. uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet is, is generally accepted to be one of the most beautiful love stories ever written. Knickers. <laughs> <laughs> He is right, cos Romeo was a good, sincere Catholic boy. Yes, that's, that's right, Maureen, and Abbott's got him down as that geezer what was Andy with his blade. <laughs> well, he was, wasn't he? He kills two blokes on one page. <laughs> yeah, the ice would have got away with it, too, if his mate hadn't a grass to the prince. Uh, betrayed, Duffy, yes. Well, let's get back to the, uh, the balcony scene for Romeo and Juliet. Are you going to read it to us, sir? No, no. Uh, we're all played different parts this time. How oh, Duffy? From what I hear of your out-of-school activities, you'd make rather a good Romeo. All right. Now, who's going to play Juliet to our star-crossed lover here? Don't look at me. <laughs> Come on, somebody's got to do it. Right. Ah, uh, uh, Duffy, Duffy. You're not embarrassed, are you? No, 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 of course you're not. Well, pick your own Juliet, then. Uh, Sharon. No, we are, then. Thank you, Dame Edith. <laughs> right, from where we left it, Sharon? Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? I'm in the bleeding garden, you know? <laughs> no, 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 Duffy. Uh, wherefore means why are you, not where are you. Carry on, Sharon. Deny thy father, refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, or I'll no longer be a... Capulet. Yeah, well, whatever that means. <laughs> Duffy, what are you doing? It says a side here, doesn't it? A side. Yes, well, you're supposed to be talking to the audience, not passing on a racing tip. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, shall I fear more, or shall I speak of this? No, you get your full penny work in, Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Peter. He's supposed to be in love. Well, why did he bloomy well get on with it then? We well, use it. It's the way. It's the way he says. It. All right, Duffy, sit down. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, uh, look, I, sh I shall read the part of Romeo. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, with another Juliet, I think. <laughs> Lisa. Right. Well, Lisa. Right, Maureen. Good. Now then, uh, Juliet uh, comes out onto her balcony at night, overlooking the garden. Hoot, hoot. <laughs> <laughs> um. Pardon me, Dunstable. Hoot, hoot. Yes, I heard the hoot, hoot. Uh, why? It's an owl. An owl? He's in the garden. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> right, uh, good. Uh, uh, th there we are then, uh, Maureen. Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Hoot, hoot. <laughs> Thank you, Dunstable. Yes. Ah, good. Well, uh, here is this beautiful girl. And now you can see why, when Romeo first sees her, he says... Hoot! Hoot! <laughs> hey, hey. But soft, what light from yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether any of you have noticed, but the school bell's gone. Hey. All right, I'll spend a weekend in a darkened room and we'll take up cudgels again on Monday. What? It's a bell. It's a bell. Hear it not, Duffy, for it is the knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. What? Hey. Hey. I think sir's right. 
I think it's a lovely love story. Yeah, get all. All them medieval mods ever done was chat. I mean, they never got down to nothing, did they? Yeah, they rubbish. did in the film. They got right down to stalkers in the film. Well, I'll tell you one line I do see the sense in. What's that, Eric? Well, that line that says, Ho, oh, what light in yonder window shines. How come? Well, the light I'm talking about is in the window of the feathers. Come on, I'll be open, yeah. sir. Yeah. You are edges, you're mad. Why? <laughs> Because I had a, a choice of schools and I chose Fen Street. Well, I don't see what more proof you want. The price I saw that other school. Richmond, it was. Fantastic facilities. All the kids wearing school uniforms. I didn't see one dirty word written on a wall. Oh, are there places like that in the outside world? <laughs> My point is that that school didn't need me. And we do, I suppose. Who do you think you are, Florence Nightingale? You know what I mean, Price. There's, there's more of a challenge here. Oh, granted, the last teacher to commit suicide wins a coconut challenge. Teaching here's a bloody penance. Then you start flagellating yourself by coming to live in the district. Right, have you read Up the Junction? That book had something to say, you know. Oh, I only saw Susie Kendall in the film and, oh, she didn't have to say a word. <laughs> what are you on about? It's just that I think I'll be able to understand these kids if I know more about their background. There's no better way of doing that than coming to live in the district. I know it's a bit rough, but it's vital. It's alive. Alive? It's bloody infested. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you just put a rabbit in your briefcase? Aye. You taking up conjuring? Oh, they sent us down two for biology, you know, dissection. Oh, I see. And you're uh, taking it home to do some work on it in preparation for a class on Monday? No, I'm having it for supper. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go up the road for a few. No, I tell a lie, several. And by closing time, all the horrors of Fen Street will have disappeared in a beautiful alcoholic haze. What do you doing over the weekend? Sticking pins in yourself? Oh, I've got to give that the whips a miss, actually. No, I've got to move some furniture in. I booked a, I booked a van for nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, God, all this, and he gets up early on the Saturday mornings. Look, what happened to Smithy? He went to the loo about 20 minutes ago. Well, he's probably fallen asleep in there. He falls asleep everywhere else. <laughs> ah, talk of the devil. <laughs> Oh, God, look, Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> Just pop my head in to say goodnight. Meeting at Victoria Coach Station this evening, and then off to the Chilterns for the weekend. I don't see how you're going to referee the school football match tomorrow, Smithy. They'll never hear your whistle from there. Oh, no, 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 no. It's someone standing in. It's all arranged. Uh, 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 oh, thank you. Anybody here, then? Ah, uh, uh, the other way round. <laughs> you taking the wife with you? Oh, well, of course. <clears throat> Oh, imagine I a great, great hill and heather people, you know. We didn't take it up till we were in our fifties, but I've been rambling ever since. We've noticed. <laughs> Marvellous. Comes in like Lawrence of Arabia and goes out looking like the hunchback and not so down. Tell us, Smithy. Dib, dib, dib. Cock, cock, cock. Oh, God, what a thought. Him and Madge disporting themselves in the heather. Fancy a quick one? Yes, all right, boy. Oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't expect to see me down there, did you? <laughs> Enter our headmaster. Uh, no, no, we didn't, uh, sir. Uh, no, my point exactly, or rather Pavlov's. You see, you heard the knock, and you naturally looked towards where a normal person's head would be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is fun, isn't it? <laughs> science is fun, isn't it? Price, you're a scientist. Why don't you try this one? No, oh, thanks, headmaster. <laughs> oh, well, joke over, I suppose. Oh, uh, uh, Hedges, I wonder, could you could you spare me a moment? Oh, well, as, as a matter of fact, sir, I was just... Oh, uh... well, it was about your career, though. Oh, uh, would you like to go on ahead, Price? No, it's all right. Don't wait for me. Right, I like one. Hello, Hedges. Now, how long have you been the lusty infant of our little family? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, this is the end of my second week, sir. In that case, great strides, Hedges. Great strides. <clears throat> oh, well, uh, thank you very much, sir. Now, um... Be frank, do you feel uh, ready to extend the area of your responsibilities? <laughs> yes, I think I do. Sir. So do I. There. So whistle. Yes, football match, school tomorrow, Monday morning, half past nine, on the common. Well done, Hedges. You're referee. Good night. Here you are. Join the bunny club. <laughs> <laughs>
usually. Why today? Over here! Hell on! Hello, sir! Come on! Right, like that is it. I wonder why you wore your bunny. Well, what if it is? Nothing. Hey, look out! Oh! I saw that. I saw a handball. You can't get away with that. <laughs> We're having a line. It's out of play. Oh, uh. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. oh, cool. Well, come on, Wagner. Move. Come, oh, yes, the ball. Oh, hasn't he got lovely legs, eh? <laughs> well, I don't like them hairy. I thought you had a thing about him, the way you always blush when he talks to you in class. Oh, I don't, do I, Sean? I changed colour my pan stick, will not I? It was quite nice, but I don't really see him physically. Oh, but is it? I mean, other qualities. They're important in a man. Yeah, they would be for you, more. I see that. Another unlucky 5 nil thrashing. That third one was offside. I'm going to check this in, oh, I really am. Now you play 4 3 3 with two full formers and Daisy Wagner in a team. That's why I don't play, innit? Told you before. You want to play my brother Motley's Sunday team with me, Fishers. And then the glass eye people. Optic away. <laughs> your brother Monty don't work for them. That's all mates of mates, and that, innit? Yeah, well, and I'm a thrashing like this, and I'm on a transfer list. Oh, uh, OK, we've only changed. <laughs> uh, sorry about that third goal. I'm, I'm not too sure of the offside rule. Yeah, drag it tight. Might have known. Hey, you coming up in a bandstand cave for a cup of tea, don't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, no, I, I can't. I'm supposed to be moving into a new flat today. I, I did have a van. I, I don't what, know. you mean you give it up just to referee a match for your pupils? Oh, I got lumbered. Uh, yes, yes, I mean... <laughs> See what I mean? Other qualities. There's no problem there. You should have seen me first. Probably bought me dad's van. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, uh, Duffy, but I don't think I could... Right, be. that's settled then. I'll give him a tinkle. Peter! Hello. Knock the bands down, Kate, on the head. We'll pick my dad up down the feathers. <laughs> <laughs> See, Bern, it's not often I get a chance to have a drink with one of my uh, lad's teachers. Yes, Mr Duffy, but I didn't expect the kids to come into the pub as well. <laughs> I took it for granted. Took it for granted, you take it for granted. Usual thing round here. Is it? Well, look, you teach a kid the wise and wherefores of drinking, now that's better than them sloping off on their own and making a fool of themselves on half a shandy. Oh, yes. When Sharon was drinking vodka and lime. <laughs> well, she's, she's a girl, ain't she? Yes. Uh, look, it's not that I want to appear... Uh, Narrow-minded, Mr. Duffy. Bert. Bert. But a teacher buying a round of drinks for his class is just a bit unusual. <laughs> well, I put that down as a mark to you, Bern. You see, I think a lot of teachers think they're better than what we are. Well, I mean, they probably are. But it's them fidget that they are that gets up my nose, if you catch my drift. Now, whereas you, you come across as just an ordinary bloke. Oh, I am. I'm ever so ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> what am I to say, Bern? <laughs> <coughs> Yes, well, I, um, meeting people, parents like you, is going to help me find out what makes these kids tick. Yeah, well, if you do find out, let us know, won't you? Well, that, look, I'd better be off. I, uh, keep the wife waiting for me dinner, and bang goes me something like Coco. Coco? Uh, <laughs> look, um, I'm, I'm very grateful for your help, uh, Bert. Hey, where did the kids go? Well, uh, they went off when you was in the other room, uh, going over the chart, I think. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. By the way, do you smoke? Well, yes, I, uh, I do, as a matter of fact. Oh. Here. Drop that. Say nothing. Oh, no, no, I couldn't. <laughs> no, look, it's all right. They fell off the back of a lorry. <laughs> cheers, Bert. Oh, cheers, Bert. Here, don't forget, Snooker Monday, I'll pick you up from school. Right. Bom, 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 bom. Oh. Friends <laughs> and neighbours. All the world is a happier place. Ba -ba -ba -bum -ba -bum. Oh, Maureen, I... Uh... Having a little dance, are you, sir? <laughs> yes. yes, I was having a little, um... Yes. Um, I thought you'd gone. I just washed the tea things for you. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's very sweet of you, Maureen. Um, well, bye-bye, then. <laughs> Shh! 
she your girlfriend? Yes, she... Um, no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's, uh... That's just a girl I knew. But you don't know her now. No, no, I, uh... No, I don't know her now. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um... Sir? Yes, Maureen? Here on your coat. Right, good. Right. Uh, right. Uh, well, I don't want to. Uh, I don't yeah, want well, to. I've got to go anyway. Thanks very much for your help, Paul Maureen. That's all right. How old was she? On the photograph, oh, she was eighteen then. I'll be eighteen in two years' time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, hmm. Well, off we go then. <laughs> didn't have a perfectly legitimate reason for being in his flat alone. Yes, but you and I weren't born yesterday, Mrs. Pierce. Mm, well, that's the <laughs> feeling in the flats and all. Yes, well, you know me, Mrs. Pierce. I'm no blackner of characters, you know. But that young Ed is. He's only been here two weeks, and I've got him down as definitely shifty. Oh, well, I like him. Oh, well, I mean, I've nothing against him, you know, but I mean, well, all this, it's, uh, it's sordidity. Isn't it? <laughs> Mind you, in the first place, this all came from Mrs. Wagner, and I wouldn't take her word as gospel for all her wall to wall carpeting and fish knives. Yeah. Of course, Wagner is a Jerry name, all right, you know. But her husband's in the British Legion. And it's a well known fact, you know, Mrs. Pierce, that the Germans are a truthful people, all right. Here, you're not thinking of making trouble for young Mr. Edges, are you? Because I wouldn't have told you if I thought that. Mrs. Pierce, as an administrative executive, I do not trade willy-nilly in idle gossip. Mr. Potter, as a shammy leather executive, neither do I, and I am knocking off. Oh, right, oh, well, off you go, then. I... Good morning, Mrs. Armitage. Pierce. Yes. <laughs> bird, bird catches the worm. Eh? Oh. Ah, good morning, what? Potter. Early bird catches the worm, eh? Oh, very witty, that one, sir. Very witty, sir. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much paperwork, yeah. Hedges, I thought I'd just catch a quick half hour of peace and quiet before our little world explodes in noisy activity. Ah, <laughs> yes, indeed, sir. Yes, indeed, sir. But uh, promise me, Headmaster, one thing. Uh, promise me you won't overdo it, sir. Overdo what, Potter? Well, I mean, no one knows better than I, sir, of all the amount of man hours you put in here, you know. Ah, a joyful burden, Potter. Ah. Well, hey ho, hey ho, as off to work we go. Uh, uh, sir, I, uh, I hate to trouble you, sir, but there is something rather sinister that ought to be brought to your notice. Sinister? Oh, dear, not cook again? Uh, no, sir, no. <clears throat> but I have reason to believe that one of your teachers is a sexual pervert. When most I wink, then do my eyes best see. 
For all the day, they view things unrespected. But when I sleep, in, in dreams they look on thee, and darkly bright are bright in dark directed. Then thou, whose shadow shadows <laughs> doth make bright, how would thy shadows form, form happy show, to the clear day with thy much clearer light, when to unseeing eyes thy shade shines so? <sighs> <laughs> well, what do you think of that? The right load of old Moody. <laughs> People don't talk like that these days, do they? Ah, uh, no, they don't, uh, Duffy, but that's not the point. I don't talk like that, do <laughs> I? <laughs> I think it is. Home's about love, right? About uh, love, yes, uh, the uh, the sonnet, Shannon, yes, yes. And some fella in them days might have said it to a Good. girl to see if he could get her going, right? Ru uh, <laughs> get her going. Uh, well, uh, basically speaking, yes. Well, if some fella said it to me, he wouldn't get me going because I wouldn't know what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> She's done you there, Chief. Sharon hasn't done anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll accept Sharon's point that this is Elizabethan language and therefore hardly likely to be used in present day century. <laughs> what I'm trying to make you understand and appreciate is the power of the language itself. Well, when it comes to pulling birds, Frankie Abbott don't need no language. It's all action with me. Yeah. Abbott, why do you persist in this ridiculous posturing? What? Chilling bloody lies. <laughs> oh, I ain't, Eric. I've had plenty of women in my time. Yeah. Abbott, we are talking about Shakespeare. 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 <laughs> Not James Joyce. Who's he when he's at home? Ah. Oh. Well, James Joyce was... Frankie does go out with girls, cos I seen him. Oh. Where? Round the flats. Oh. Thank you, Dunstable, yes. Oh. Uh, James Joyce was an Irish writer who wrote Ulysses. He was playing Kiss Chase. Oh. <laughs> All his little sister's mates. Oh. Yeah, just about your world, Frankie. I love playing hey. Kiss Chase. I was getting my sister in for tea. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's enough. Oh. I don't want this, and I shall confiscate every cigarette in this room. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's better. Now, Abbott and James Joyce can wait for another day. We are discussing the sonnet of Shakespeare's, which I just read. Now, Sharon, I believe you had something to say? Well, I lost the thread now, haven't I? Ah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Maureen? <laughs> Maureen, Maureen you, you've been very quiet. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the sonnet of Shakespeare's. Uh, what did you think of it? I thought it was lovely. Yeah, and I know why. Shut up, you. Abbott. Now tell me, Maureen, why in particular did you like the sonnet? Because you've got such a lovely reading voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really what I meant. I know what she means, though. Shut up, big mouth. Maureen. Well. Maureen. Don't blame yourself. No, no, I won't. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Potter? The headmaster would like to see you in the staff room. Oh, what does he want now? As if you didn't know. <laughs> Look, I've got to go and see the headmaster. Carry on uh, looking at the sonnet, which I just read. <laughs> all right, then, all right, then, all right. What's been going on here, then? Nose, nose. What? Well. It's all right keeping it out of other people's business, eh? Now, look here, Sonny Jim. If I was your father... If you was my father, mate, I'd have run away from home years ago. I could put that down in my report book, you know. Yeah. Oh, Potter, do you mind? I'm trying to study my Shakespeare, and I... Shakespeare? <laughs> I bet you don't even know who he is. Oh, yeah? Well, I bet you don't know who James Joyce is. Eh? Who? Oh? He was Irish, and he wrote Useless. You see? <laughs> Dan knows. What? So do I. You sneeze? Oh. <laughs> I know that's good, I do. Right, go on, get on with it. I have got to get your milk ready.
Bill Hedges. <coughs> On Friday, I said great strides, didn't I? Yes, you did, sir, twice. Yes, well, you know what I'm saying today, Hedges? Not yet, sir, no. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, you mean Saturday, sir? Ah, there's merit in a clean breast, Doris. Well, it was only a game, sir. A game? <laughs> was there or was there not a young girl present? Oh, yes, sir, there were two. Two? Well, they were only watching. Watching? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I, I wasn't quite sure of the rules, sir. <laughs> well, look, I'm sure I can do much better when I get the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win them all, sir. What is he talking about, Doris? The school football match, I believe, Headmaster. Oh, I see. He's lost the thread again. <laughs> Hedges, you've lost the thread again. Oh, have I, sir? Yes. Now, I am going to be succinct. You are... Oh, I say, that's a nice tie. Where did you get it? <laughs> you are a young man. And young men, quite naturally, have, um... have, uh, <clears throat> sexual urges. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Hedges, do you suffer from um, S urges? No, I quite enjoy them, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Hedges, are you sure that you are revealing both ends of your spectrum? <laughs> are you accusing me of being a homosexual, sir? <laughs> Sit down and listen to the headmaster. Yes, but he just did, 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 did. Unruffle your feathers, young man. Unruffle your feathers. Sit down. Now, nobody is accusing you of anything. And I shall pass no judgment until I have all the evidence in my possession. Evidence? What evidence? The, de the situation is delicate. Yes, razor sharp, one might say. But I want you to know, Hedges, that I never did approve of the methods of Senator Robert Mc McCarthy. Doris, facts. All that you can get... Oh, Hedges. Hedges. <laughs> He's cracked up. <laughs> He's lost his marbles. <laughs> Dan, never let the headmaster's somewhat abstract method of conversation blind you to the fact that he has a fine, agile and sensitive mind. Well, maybe, but I haven't the foggiest idea what he's talking about. Was or was not Maureen Bullock alone in your flat on Saturday? All the kids were there. They were helping me to move. Oh, yes, she was there on her own, but only for about five minutes. Long enough. Long enough for what? <laughs> and when she left, did you or did you not bid her an affectionate farewell? Yes, I waved to her. <laughs> is that what this is all about? What this is all about is the version of the affair which reached our ears via a long line of idle and malicious gossip typical of this district. Well, isn't that bloody marvellous? Language? Uh, I suppose the version you heard was that Maureen came running out of the flat, stripped to the waist, screaming blue murder, with me after saying, come back, my little love, I haven't had my evil way with you yet. <laughs> I find that singularly unamusing. Yeah, well, I'm not exactly tickled to death. How on earth did it get back here? Don't tell me. Potter. Innocent. An absolutely incident innocent. Um, innocent incident, and nothing at all, and it comes out soundly like one of the juicy bits in Lolita. And what gets me is you believe it. Of course I don't. You don't even it. give me the credit. For you, you don't believe it. Of course not. Oh, thank you, Monsieur. You may be headstrong, self-opinionated, and immature, but I do not have you down as a lecher. Well, that's extremely kind of you, Monsieur. <laughs> the point which you are missing entirely is that a teacher outside school is in an extremely vulnerable position. Anything he does is open to misinterpretation. Anything. All right, now now tell me this. Was having a drink with Mr Duffy in a pub on Saturday open to misinterpretation? Of course. It could quite easily be seen as you favouring his child. Well, I'm afraid I've got you there, monsieur, because it wasn't only his son that was in the pub with us. His son? There was Sharon, Maureen, in the pub. and... I didn't let them buy a round of drinks. <laughs> and I suppose you spent the rest of the afternoon in a gambling casino and then went on to a strip club. Say the Chinese invented the rocket smithy. I think it was Doris Rotten you were. Yes, I, I haven't heard a word from Hedges for quite three minutes. You don't think he's died of fright and she hasn't noticed? What? Oh. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, uh, Price made a joke, I think. And what are you both doing here? I'm waiting to get something for my locker. I didn't want to damn your flow of invective, see? And you? I've just got a free period. I, I wanted somewhere to sit down. Oh. Ah, <laughs> uh. oh, 
Use the lighted matches under the fingernails, did she? Oh, she can be a bumptious old bitch when she wants to be. Still, she didn't frighten me. Oh, then why are you smoking two fags? Oh, <laughs> Do you know what she said? Yes. We were listening. I tell you what's worse. What? She's bloody right. Uh, what am I supposed to do outside school? Walk around with a paper bag over my head? Not a bad idea. Just don't get involved, old man. Teachers are somehow expected to be paragons of virtue. But I didn't do anything wrong. No. Neither did I in 1952. Except perhaps to care for a child more than the parents seem to. But it lost me my chance of ever being a headmaster. The first thing you've got to do is to remember to always keep at least three desks between you and Miss Maureen Bullock. It's obvious she fancied you something rotten. Schoolgirl crush, she... Do you know, I disgust myself sometimes. Why, do you fancy her as well? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I've been thinking about how all this affects me. How does that young child feel? Can you manage to kneel down, hmm? Smithy? I think we've got a prayer meeting coming up. <laughs> and a parent, yes, they must be terribly upset. That's it. If Doris Ewell is so damn clever, why didn't she think of it? Oh, I just know that boy's going to do something rash. He's glowing with an inner light. Ah, oh, the trouble is, one of these days he set fire to his bloody self. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you go on. I'd like to have a word with Maureen alone. Yeah. This thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, now, Maureen, I, uh, I suppose you've heard some of these silly rumours. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Well, you and I know that they are completely groundless. They're not really, are they? Uh, what, do you, what do you mean, Maureen? I can't help having feelings. Women do. Yes, and um, I'm deeply touched, Maureen. I, yes, I'm, I'm very touched. <laughs> Only it's people thinking you're a dirty old man I hate. <laughs> and it's all I <laughs> oh, don't, don't cry, Maureen. There, there. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Hanky. Oh, Hanky. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> all right now? <laughs> there, there, Maureen. There, there, no trouble. There, there. Dad! Dad! <laughs> Mr. Bullock! Well, you know me, Miss Yule. I hate to make trouble for other people, but I have to report that Mr. Hedges and that Bullock girl are at it again. <laughs> In one of my classrooms. At what? Well, it. Well, you know, it, it. <laughs> they were embracing brazenly. Oh, yes, and now it seems that the girl has really got something to worry about and all. Oh, that man. Exactly. He's filthy. <laughs> I warn you, Potter, you'd better be right. Have no fear about that, monsieur. When it comes to filth, I can vouch for myself. <laughs> One more word, and I'll put this right down the back of your throat. That's what I'll say, Mr. Hedges, if ever I find out who started this slander. Well, libelous, that's what it is. Well, I'm just grateful you agreed to come and see me, Mr. Bullock. At least we've sorted things out. It was very decent of you to ask me. Mr. Hedges, oh, Hull, I uh, thought this I should... is Maureen's father. Oh, uh, Mr. Bullock, how did you... I, I asked him to come. And you did what? Very glad I was, too. Well, of course, I knew there was nothing in this right from the start. I know my Maureen, she's a good girl. And now I've met Mr. Hedges, I can see that he's a thoroughly above-board fellow. The whole situation is finished, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, you're very generous, Mr. Bullock. Oh, not me. There is the credit. Uh, yes, quite. You must think it's a very lucky having a young gentleman of Mr. Bernard's calibre on your teaching business. Oh, yes, we're, we're all very pleased with <coughs> Bernard. <laughs> well, that's very sweet of you. Doris. <laughs> oh, Maureen, home to our tea. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hedges. Good night. Thank you again, Miss Ewell. Good night, Mr. Bullock. 
Let's say good night to your teachers, Maureen. Good night, Miss Yule. Good night, Maureen. Good night, sir. Yeah, good night, Maureen. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad we've sorted that one out. Mr. Hedges, earlier today I called you headstrong, self opinionated, and immature. Yes, there's no need to apologise, Miss Yule. <laughs> you are also extraordinarily lucky. Staying alone with the child after school, seeing a parent without any official backing. He's a very reasonable man. And if he hadn't been, I might quite well have come in here to find you both brawling on the floor, don't you see? Yes, I, I suppose. I thought so. so. Potter. <laughs> Hello. <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> you need any assistance, Miss Yule? No, no, no. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll agree that I did quite right to report what was going on between that young man and the girl. So that's it. I have a good mind to stick your administrative hat right up your... <laughs> <laughs> Mr Hedges, Mr Potter was quite within his rights to report a doubtful situation on school premises. But he wasn't within his rights to make a lot of local gossip sound like intended rape to the headmaster, and I'm going to... You will do nothing. Now, kindly leave us. Oh, thank you very much, Monsieur. Thank you. I'm very glad to see you didn't take the part of that upstart against an old desert rat. In your case, Mr. Potter, rat is the operative word. <laughs> what? How dare you malign a member of my staff with nothing more than licentious chit-chat? It, it, it was my duty. Your duty is to the good name of this school, not to the local fishwives. Mrs. Wagner keeps a wall shop. Should this country ever be cursed with the Gestapo, you will undoubtedly find your niche. Until then, kindly remember that you are nothing more than a glorified cleaner. But I am not a cleaner. <laughs> I'm certainly not a cleaner. <laughs> I'm an administrative executive. <laughs> Mr. Fair enough, Miss Ewell. No more involvement with, with kids or parents. Good. Ah, early boy. Mr. Duffy. There you are. Come along with me, son. Got a table book for six, ain't I? So, it's dinner with a parent now, is no, it? No, no. Snooker. Fit then? Um, unavoidable. Nonsense. Oh, this lady, one of your mates, said Byrne. No, no, this is... Oh, well, this is Miss Ewell, the assistant headmaster. Oh, one of the knobs, eh? <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs Ewell. Oh, uh, Mr Duffy, always happy to meet a parent. Yeah, yeah, right then. Oh, here, yeah, by, by the way, love, do you smoke? Uh, no, not really. Oh, uh, oh, never mind, eh? Here, here, cop this lot. Oh. Say nothing. Oh, oh no. no, really, no, I... No, it's I... all right, it's all right. Any of the Burns is a mate of mine. Well, come on, Byrne. It's all right, Dory. It's a fellow off the back of a lorry. 